Freaksters here back with another Assetto Corsa Competizione tip. In this video I'm going to be covering Brake Gamma. So what the heck is Brake Gamma? Brake Gamma is a setting under Options, Controls, and what this does is it amplifies your brake pressure. So you might be saying, well why would I need to mess with this? Well the reason why you want to mess with brake gamma is if you're using a potentiometer, which is basically the stock pedals you get with Logitech G29s or Thrustmaster T150 kind of wheels, they do not have a load cell or hydraulic feedback. So what does that mean? I don't know what hydraulic load cell feedback is. So basically what that means is it measures the distance you put your foot into the pedal. So as you can see on the screen, I'm moving the brake pedal right now, and I can tell you, I don't feel any feedback because there isn't any. It's based on electrical resistance of what the pedal is telling the computer. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do three laps in the Austin Martin V8 Vantage under these settings, which is found right here. The default when you start up the game is one gamma. Show three laps of mostly crappy driving, but that's to be improved upon in the future. <laughs> it's just, I want you to note, as I'm doing these three laps with the default brake gamma, watch the braking. And also, when you do these uh, adjustments, I already did this ahead of time, make sure you name it something that makes sense for your wheel or config setup. Because if you don't hit save, if you adjust and fiddle with this brake gamma option, it won't actually save. <laughs> I had that mistake happen before, and it's pretty funny when it happens. So that is what I would suggest turning up. What I have right here, if I load the profile I prefer, I prefer the brake gamma to be between the 2.3 area. Now, you don't want to go too crazy with Brake Gamma, because what Brake Gamma will do, it says I'll demonstrate, is it amplifies your brake pressure in the game. So, for a given amount of pressure you put in the pedal, right now it's 1 to 1. So that means, when I press the brakes like this, it's 1 to 1, so it doesn't amplify it, and it makes it harder to control and drive when you're using this kind of wheel. But you might not notice that right away, but as you're learning stuff like trail braking, it gets a little bit awkward. <laughs> so, this is with default gamma. Do a quick three laps here. Hopefully not crash. See, I could barely get it to fully lock up. I have to really press the pedal inwards. It's also the first time I've ever driven on this track in this particular car. And to keep the results the same, I'm not going to adjust the camera height. I'm just keeping it on the default field of view. And try to keep things consistent here. It does take a while to get used to when you go from having the brakes actually amplify much faster to brakes that are much slower when you put the force and pedal down. And as you can see, it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> as for the track itself, this is Ioma. I believe it might be DLC, I'm not sure if it is, but I can correctly in the comments if that is true or not. 
actually pretty cool. I picked this track on purpose because, well, it's something I never did track wise and car wise. This is my only third time ever. Perfect. This is one. Now you get to really see a difference right here under heavy braking. You know, like sort of on the right corner of your screen here. It's like, oh my. It's, it ramps up much slower with this default setup. It might be subtle to the naked eye, but once you start really analyzing this stuff, you notice how much slower it is. And for some people, maybe that's fine. But I know I'm trying to practice trail breaking it. It kind of feels like an off and on switch. Like, as soon as I let go of the brake pedal, it really wants to really like the pedal. You see it also at the bottom right corner, you see like a TC and a TC2. TC is like the primary traction control. TC2 is like how aggressive the cutoff is when it applies the traction control. As you can see right there, it's another example of why I don't use default linear anymore in this pull off the track. Well, this track is actually not too hard to drive. Trying to get a little faster. I'm gonna go around for one more lap and then quickly switch to the other camera. And it won't change anything in the setup. It'll be the same as I set it up for filming. Run away, cross the fastest lap. should be up in temperature. This car is actually not bad to drive. It really is a car. And I see why a lot of people recommend this car to learn driving. It's actually really good. Like I said, this is not like one of these videos where you go really fast or like close to the same hot lap right where breaking the wall right here from the past is slapped up and that's perfect. This is just to show and demonstrate what a difference brake gamma can do. Especially under heavy braking. It's where it's most beneficial when you have to really stomp on the brakes. It doesn't take as long to lock up the brakes. Since it functioned on ABS, which is Xbox braking system for GT3 and GT4 cars, they actually are supposed to be driven near or at locking brake pressures depending on the turn. That doesn't mean you have to lock up the brakes every quarter in situation, but that's how it works. We'll take a quick look at the timetable and then I'll switch it to our preferred braking. And look at the timetable. Now don't worry about the first lap, that is because I actually was spending time setting up the video. So note the two laps here. Fastest is 157. I bet I could get that down even further if I tweak the setup and optimize the build better, but that's not too bad for doing the track blind like that. So now we'll go into options, controls, and we'll load 
the break gamma setting, which is right here. So it go from 1 to 2.36. Some people prefer 2. I've heard people going high as 2.5. Going beyond 2.5 is pretty, pretty dicey though, because then it does the opposite effect where it ramps up way too fast and it might be too high for most people. Although you can do that if you want to try it out and see what happens. So now that we did that, we'll just double check to make sure that I loaded that. Yes, I always double check just to make sure. Okay, good. So it actually is loading the correct profile, which is 640. Which, by the way, the recommended steering lock is 640 for the Aston Martin, Bentley, and AMG GTR for the GT3 cars. So we go to setup, put in fresh tires, and head out. Yeah, I want to get out of the pits as fast as possible so the tires don't cool down too much. Because you have way too long, they actually do cool down. And you have to reset the setup. Alright, this is with the 2.36 gamma. Look at how much quicker the brakes lock up already. I'm pressing less force to get the same intended effect. So I can't help with applying uh, brake pressure. And a little bit of force familiarity will help too. As you see now, I'm ramping it to be much quicker. It allows for a faster tail brake action too. Which I'm still trying to master the truck, by the way. <laughs> I still have not fully understood it, but I'm getting there. The learning process in this game. And like before, just take note of what the bottom right corner of the screen is doing with the brakes. Sometimes it might be hard to see on certain devices, but you can see how much easier it is to slow down doing this technique. And also custom the setting, so it allows you to do this in the first place with that. I already got better rotation already. That is so much quicker. And even under this dangerous braking zone that I almost butcher every time, it actually is helpful. It takes a little bit of getting used to it, though. If you're not used to that quick walk up, just practice with it. Go. Perfect. Now I took that turn a little sloppier than I probably should have. Actually, there are probably as many turns I probably took sloppier than I probably should have. But this is just to demonstrate what the study can do. I so said I like to find the audience there. Okay. Let's see if we can push this to. And as you can see. I don't have to put as much brake pressure for certain turns still. So it's helpful. It's good for your left foot. Safe wear tear in your left foot. Just having to apply so much pressure. Not that they're hard to depress or anything, it's just it's easier to feel. You don't have to use as much effort to do the same thing. break a little bit earlier than that. That's okay. Just trying to learn to track and also demonstrate by adjusting brake handle is very important. So now I can take these turns much faster. Just doing this trip. 
I did not change the setup from what I originally set it to in this demonstration. We should be getting a faster lap time via final lap here. Well done, mate. That's the fastest lap. Go, final lap. See, now I can really experiment with how much braking can play up here. Probably took that turn of two falls of gear, but that's alright. Since it's just practicing, showing what it can do, it's close. Hopefully that doesn't develop any. Validating the lamp would kind of be erotic and funny at the same time. Show the timetable. All right, so don't worry about lap four. That's not what we're looking for. So here we go. Before I optimize the tire pressure, which I'll look at off camera, this is the difference with the brake gamma adjustment. Now, granted, you can argue and say like, well, you're getting more familiar with the track. It's like, well, that's also true. That is also part of the variable, so I tried to make it as succinct as possible. Gaining top 2 seconds with a 2.36 gamma, or is it 2.31? You know, if it's never speeding 0.5, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but having like one quick more does matter. So I went from 157 to 155, so it's worth doing. <laughs> Two seconds is a significant jump. Even if you argue that course familiarity also played a factor, which it does, that is a huge improvement already. And I didn't even get into the tire pressures and all that neat stuff. And so I hope this uh, tip and gameplay demonstration of what adjusting brake gamma for Logitech G29 and Thrustmaster T150 stock pedals can do. It is my hopes that with this brake gamma tuning trick, this can either help you hold off on buying load cells or hydraulics if you can't get them right away. I still personally would recommend looking into them if you wanted to go towards the esports route. But even if you never do, or like the pedals you have, tweaking brake gamma with the sock pedals does produce competitive results. I've even heard of people actually in higher leagues of the communities I'm in actually still use these pedals. It just takes a lot more practice because <laughs> you don't get the feedback that more fancy pedals do. So this mitigates it and this will be Rigster's journey. Signing off. <laughs>